Every BMP is a tool, but you have to understand how to utilize that tool to become effective on your project. To understand what tool is the best one for your site is to understand the life cycle cost of each BMP. What does it cost you to purchase? What does it cost you to install? What does it cost you to maintain? And every, every, every BMP requires maintenance. And what does it cost you at the end of the project to either dispose of or leave in place? If you don't understand the full life cycle cost of every BMP, you may be thinking that you're making the right decision for your project because it costs less, but you're gonna to touch it 20 times over the life of the project, and at the end of the project, you've got project budget overrun. To complete a project, whether that be for a permit or for a local drainage code requires criteria in meeting final stabilization. For the most part, what that means is when our project is done, there is no risk of erosion that is going to occur after we leave this project. The other things that are really important to achieve project completion are to remove all of your temporary BMPs. That means all of your sediment fence, all of your catch basin inserts, any plastic that's being utilized as a liner or a covering BMP need to be removed to achieve that final stabilization. Final stabilization is easy to understand when we're talking about paving or making a hard surface application on a project. But when it comes to vegetation, what's really important is you understand the local criteria for coverage in achieving that final stabilization. When you learn about final stabilization coverage criteria, it can mean 70% cover of what was pre-existing when you started the project. It could be 70% coverage of the new stabilization vegetation, or it could be even up to 90% coverage, depending upon what jurisdiction you're working in. If you're doing something like a mitigation project, a habitat project, or a restoration project, you may also be doing plantings. Those projects may need to be supported with irrigation or freeze protection. And so you could be on those projects for much longer in achieving that final stabilization criteria. So it's really important you know what that criteria is to be able to achieve your outcome. Planning out your BMPs, understanding how these BMPs are used, installing them correctly, and making sure that you're doing them for the right reasons at the right time will become the most effective way to manage your site to achieve your environmental outcomes. All right, that wraps up erosion and sediment control for small projects. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. We don't want the environment to see any evidence of our work. We don't want to see a plume of any type of pollution coming off of our activity. We want to keep what we're doing inside the project, inside the project, not expressing itself beyond our perimeter control. We don't want other people's stuff running to us. Planning ahead and thinking about these different BMPs and utilizing the BMPs fully, all the way from your operational controls to final stabilization of the project is critical in success of meeting your environmental outcomes. There are many tools and techniques to help you manage your construction and maintenance activities to prevent pollutants from leaving your site. Even on small projects, your efforts can make a huge difference to the health of our waters and reduce the cost of stormwater system maintenance. Every project is different, but we hope that you have learned some practical methods and BMPs that can help you meet the environmental outcomes for your projects regardless of scope. The Washington Stormwater Center is here as a resource to help our communities navigate the complexities of stormwater management. We regularly update our website with the most current information and training available. Please join us for future learning opportunities.